In 1893, Chicago was celebrating the World's Columbian Exposition, also known as the World's Fair. The expo was a sight to be seen, and even exhibited the world's very first Ferris wheel. An attractive, charming, and charismatic pharmacist by the name of Herman Webster Mudgett, better known as H. H. Holmes, built a World's Fair hotel, which was paid for by his insurance-swindling efforts. This was a fancy facade meant to hide something much more sinister. Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Let me take you back to 1893 where we will be taking a look at H.H. H. Holmes' Murder Castle. Now H.H. H. Holmes was a pharmacist of sorts and he eventually acquired the pharmacy due to potentially unscrutinous means and by blackmailing and uh, basically gathering money in unscrupulous ways he was able to make his famous murder castle. Now the murder castle had a bunch of twisting hallways and doors that would lead to brick brick walls as well as things like acid pits and slime pits and an alarm that encircled the house so that if anybody tried to leave this castle where the guests enter and never leave then he would be alerted and he would sell their skeletons on the black market. Now we're playing the game H.H. Holmes Murder Castle which plays two to six players. It takes about an hour to play and it's for ages 13 and up and in the game you're playing as an unfortunate accomplice of Holmes. You didn't actually realize that you were helping this sadistic psychopath attempt to gather these bodies, per se, from his castle and sell them on the black market. You were just helping him either build the house or do something that you didn't actually realize that he was actually being a bad person. So the cops have basically forced you to go back to the pharmacy where the castle is started to be built and you need to go into his castle and get enough evidence against him. And if you can get enough evidence against him at whatever the cost, then you are going to uh, tell them, I'm going to call them up, I guess, when he's around you and the cops will come and arrest him. Now, there are other unfortunate accomplices as well in the house and they are trying to do the same thing to clear their name and they're also willing to do anything they can in order to get the evidence before you. Now be careful of course because Holmes is on the loose in the castle and there are speculations that will state that some people even believe him to be Jack the Ripper, one of many people it could have been. Regardless though, he's a dangerous person and you have to gather the evidence needed to convict him and get out before he captures you in this crazy little murder mystery style board game which I will show you more down below. So here we have H. H. Holmes' Murder Castle, Crimes of History, and the setup for the game for two players, and it plays up to six. As you can see, each player is going to get a unique character, and I have Jonah Nesbitt here, and I have Adeline Windoyle, and each of the characters are also going to get specific clue uh, color tokens and you're going to be shuffling up a deck of cards which are these guys over here dealing out one to every player and then they're each going to get a total of 13 of the different clue tokens in the different colors which will just go ahead and attach to these here this will also be added to each player's area which will cover it up if you're playing a game that isn't two players or with the variant because as you can see it adds an extra one for each of the colors this space over here is whenever hh home strikes you'll be placing black cubes on these markers which will actually reduce the amount of evidence you have making you drop it every player is going to get their own unique individual once per game ability and once you use it you can go ahead and flip it over and each character does something different she will al allow her to avoid hh homes once and he will actually be able to place or remove a brick from the castle which is a good way of stopping the craziness of the ha castle this is the key for the game which is just going to symbolize the player who starts the game off and it will rotate as each round ends we have the tiles for the game which are a big stack over here you're going to have the different little clue pieces that will go onto the board based on the number in this little shield here for each room which will be accommodated from the ferris wheel so when a new room pops up these cubes will go there hh H. holmes is going to start in the basement and everybody else will start in the pharmacy these are the three basement tiles that will start the game just like this and the pharmacy will come up just above basement one these are the cards in the game that you'll be drawing throughout the game that will help you. These are called event cards, and you can have a total of four in your hand. And this stack of cards here is Holmes' movement deck, and at the end of every round you'll draw one of these and Holmes will move. There are the action selections here, one through six, and an extra one when you're playing the six-player variant. 
as well as, of course, like I said before, these are just variants on all the different evidence you can have. So once you have made the setup, you won't need these anymore. Extra characters that all have their own unique one-up abilities. The brick that you can use will be coming either from the deck here or separate for the main char the character if you're using this guy here, Jonas. And then we have stuff that will be used for specific rooms in the murder castle, like this laboratory shelf here. There's some bookshelves here, which are hidden bookshelves that you can use, as well as trap doors and other tokens that will become useful as the game progresses, depending on the rooms you open up. And the last couple little things are you can have a bag of these different evidence tokens, which are randomized, and then a bag of black cubes, the rule book for the game, which is this guy here explaining pretty much how to play the game, and then the box for H.H. H. Holmes Murder Castle. That's the entire setup for the game, and of course when you play more players you'll just do the same thing with this given setup for each player. And uh, the setup for everything else is pretty much the same unless you play six players, which you add this. And that's it. That's all you need to do to set the game. Let's go on down below. I'll explain just how to play a round or two, what you need in order to win the game. And then we'll come up and I'll tell you whether you should pick it up or not. Okay, so we are playing the two-player variant of H.H. Holmes Murder Castle, which you would actually go ahead and take these off and utilize these as well, making the game a little longer because there's only two players. But we'll just pretend like we're playing with more players. We'll pretend like we're playing with three, so I'll just keep these covered up. It won't matter because we're just going to show you a round of play regardless. Everybody's got their once abilities. They've got the key set up for Jonah, which means he's going to be the person who goes first. And I added the uh, player reference cards here, which will tell you how the actions function and then what to do after you've performed your actions and then when he moves and the passing of this key until eventually the game ends. So the setup's all good. We got the five clue tokens randomly selected on each of the parts of this little Ferris wheel here. The starting of one of in each uh, one clue in each of these areas here where the basement is and Holmes is. And then the pharmacy with its many doors that basically will allow you to start searching throughout the game. And let's go ahead and talk about it. So first of all, Jonas is going to start, or Jonah will start, and he can select any of these actions here and once he selects an action he's going to get to use the selection bonus because he selected it he gets the selection bonus everybody else will then also partake in that action if they so choose to and then after that the action will be removed so that you can no longer take that action in the given round there are six actions total one of them is move into one room with the with the selection bonus of advance the Ferris wheel by one position clockwise, meaning you could actually turn this Ferris wheel when you go ahead and take that action. Uh, moving into a room is very, very simple. You will move from door to door, provided the door doesn't have a lock on it, and provided that you're not walking from a first story into a second story without the ability to climb up to the second story. There will be little tokens that will indicate whether you can do that or not. This one over here is move up to two rooms, and that will just basically let you move one and then two spaces. Uh, if you have the selection bonus, it will let you move three spaces instead. Exploring the castle, a very useful thing at the very beginning of the game, which is going to give you the ability to explore twice, and then everybody else will get to explore once. This is collect evidence, which means the main collector will get to take two evidence from an area or a room, and then everyone else will get to collect one, and you'll be placing them into these little areas here because you're trying to fill out your evidence. The other one here is draw an event card. These are the event cards, and you'll be able to draw them and utilize them when they say. Some will take effect instantly, they'll say play now, and others will say keep, where you can go ahead and use at a later date or just anytime on your turn. This here, though, is the bonus for selection. We get to draw two cards, and everyone else will just draw one. The final thing is move homes. And based on when and who selected it, when you select to move homes, you're simply going to draw a card from the homes deck. You'll move homes based on where it says to move them, and then everyone else will do the same thing with the benefit, the selection benefit of the person who made, chose this action can evade homes, which means homes won't affect them for this specific movement cycle. However, after every single player has taken an action, then at the end of the round, Holmes will move and that player is still going to be affected. It's only protected, he's only protected by this specific action. Okay, so that's pretty much the six actions you can take. Once each player has taken one of the actions, then the round is going to end. We're going to flip over one of these cards uh, randomly, so make sure you shuffle this deck up, flip it over, and then see if Holmes moves. There's certain things like the Holmes Rampage, where he'll actually draw multiple cards, and then other ones which will let you make a choice. This says 3 or 16, and basically the person who has the key will select which way that Holmes moves, and then uh, another one is just simply it will tell you which space to move him to. Go to... 24. 
So let's go ahead and show you just one quick round. The first round is we'll have Najona here and he's gonna wanna explore the castle. So he'll take this explore action, he'll remove it, and then he's gonna explore. And to explore is pretty simple. You're gonna go say, okay, I'm in this room. I can only explore this room. There are three doors in this room, one, two, and three. I'll start by exploring one. And ooh, this is a maze, which means it actually counts as two rooms in one. And I'll just go ahead and place it just like that. And then I'm going to fill these spaces up and place locks on all of the doors that are not connected. So I'll place a lock here and I'll place a lock here. Then I'm going to put in three cubes here and two cubes here. And when there's no cubes left, this thing is just going to simply rotate. And you're going to fill in this space here with five new random evidence cubes. Okay. Then, after that is done, he's going to explore one more time because his selection bonus said he gets to have one more. He'll flip this over. It's a dining room. He'll place this somewhere. Maybe he'll place it right there. And then it's going to say one cube. So he'll take it from here and place it here. And then he's going to fill in locks on all the doors that are not connected. One, two, and three. Then the next player is going to get to this player here, Adeline, is going to go ahead and get to explore as well, but only once, not twice, which wouldn't matter anyway, because there's only one more door left. So this is the bathroom here. We'll connect the bathroom up to the pharmacy. Then she's going to choose three cubes, evidence cubes, and place them here. And because there's no additional doors around here, there's no other additional locks. Then that would be the end of that specific action. He chose the action. He got the action selection bonus. She took the action. No more players left. Now it is her turn. And she will get to choose any of the actions left that are available. And maybe she'll choose to go ahead and move. And she will select this one here. Move into one room. So she will go ahead and move into one room. And also she can advance the Ferris wheel by one position going clockwise. So she needs certain colors here. She's gonna need yellow, green, blue, and then these two the least, I guess, or these two the most, these three the least. So maybe she'll just go ahead and head into, which one is she? She's this one, heading to here. We don't need the rest of these guys, they're not playing. And, ooh, maybe not, maybe over here. Yeah, over here actually. So she'll move over here. And also she gets to go ahead and move this Ferris wheel as well. So rotates that. And then of course he will just get to take one action. He can just simply move one space and he'll move into this maze here. After that, the both of the actions have been taken. This is removed and everyone has taken an action. Everyone's got their selection bonus that selected an action. And you're going to move on to the next portion of the game, which is going to be a return um, the selected action tiles. So we'll take these and place them back in the spaces they're supposed to be in. And then we're gonna go ahead and move Holmes by flipping over one of these cards here. And this says move him to 24. Now, if Holmes cannot be moved, he will simply stay where he is. However, if the number is present here, so let's go ahead and just say that it was 10, he would move to that space. And like I said before, if you have the key and Holmes has to move and you have the option to choose, you can choose which space he's going to go on to. So if he went to here, let's just say it moved him to 10, he would go here. And then after that, the key would pass to the next player and uh, the next round would begin and all of the actions would be left available. Uh, now, if Holmes did walk onto some player, Holmes would strike them. And when that happens, they're going to take a black cube and place it on the player that it's, he struck. So it would be placed on her. And basically what that says is minus one. So she would choose one of these cubes here and she'd have to drop it on the space she's at. And it would just fall down onto the ground. Now, what's nice about this character here, though, is if Holmes did try to strike her, she does have this once ability, once a game ability where she can go ahead and use that and move away from him one space away and not lose the evidence. And as you can see, the more times Holmes strikes, the more evidence is going to be removed from her board. And it's very important that she keeps all the evidence that she possibly can. If it was anybody else though, they would unfortunately have to suffer in some way losing just the evidence cubes. Um, now, that's the basic idea of the game. You'll be moving around this castle. You're going to be attempting to go into certain areas of the game. There's second story tiles. Let me go ahead and just show you one of them. There's bricks. And there's special event areas as well. So here's a second story one, for instance. Second story can only be reached from these uh, stairs. And if they connect to another room that's in the first story, then you'll put one of these second story tokens to block that so that you can only move from the first to the second story provided you're able to. And that will form the basement, the first floor, and the second floor. Additionally, if they have this little fire symbol on it, that is a special room that'll have certain 
room um, bump benefits or negatives, depending on you walk in, like this maze here, it has two separate rooms in it. So if you want to walk from here to here, it would cost you an extra action. But in this case, you actually can't even walk over here because it's blocked by this weird corridor. There's a laboratory room as well, which it comes with this thing here. And when you collect things on the laboratory, you have to flip these over and see what happens to you, whether Holmes will strike you, whether you're going to lose evidence, or whether nothing will happen, or even potentially gain some kind of benefit as well. And it's kind of like a Russian roulette room specifically, and all the rooms do different things. As well as the cards, these cards are going to give you some kind of benefit. Sometimes they'll give you bookshelves that will let you go from one room to another when you normally couldn't enter a room. Or trap doors, when collecting evidence from one room, you'll fly into another room. So all these different things can happen. Um, these are the evidence cards here, or the event cards. And like I said before, you can choose to, there's keep ones and play immediately ones. Some of them will give you evidence. Some of them will let you move to certain areas. And then there's the main one called the snitch, which we're going to talk about now because this is how you win the game of H.H. Holmes Murder Castle. To win the game, you need to fill your evidence board up. Then Holmes needs to be in the pharmacy and you'll have to play this snitch card. And when you play the snitch card and you're in the pharmacy with Holmes, then you can go ahead and target another player to, to move Holmes onto. And provided you have all of your evidence filled up and they can't counter this, you're going to win because that says that you've got all the evidence you need and you've pushed Holmes away from you. So you can go ahead and call the police on him and get him arrested. There are cards that can stop the snitch, however, and ways in which Holmes might not be so keen to letting you stop him. As well, of course, the other players don't want you to escape with the evidence because if you do, they're all going to be found guilty guilty by default and be subjugated to whatever problem that Holmes might face uh, in terms of the police and the law and, of course, imprisonment. But that's the basic idea of the game. The castle is going to get larger and larger. There's going to be a bunch of crazy things that are going to happen. But all you need to do is gather the evidence, get to the pharmacy with Holmes, and then, of course, pushed him off onto another player and leave getting him to be arrested along with everybody else because you don't, you don't care about them. You only care about yourself, right? That's that's the most important thing in the game. Anyway, that's a basic idea for the game. There's a bunch of different little things I didn't talk about, but you'll see them as they come up. A lot of things are pretty simple, self-explanatory as far as the cards go and whatnot. But let me tell you what I think about it regardless. So let's go ahead and discuss H.H. H. Holmes's Murder Castle and of course the board game as well. It is an intriguing story about a person who's incredibly deranged, one of the most incredibly deranged people we have on record, in fact, as to all the crazy things he did. It's like the Hirsch Castle, what we have over here in California, but with a lunatic building it and designing it for torture and other deranged agendas that they may have. I mean, he specifically was gathering bones to then sell to people for scientific experiments to then basically make more to the castle, which, and then just kind of, it was, it was, it was crazy what he did. And this game does a good job thematically of bringing that back to life, showing how the castle kind of got formed, how you're walking through, you don't know what to expect because things are always changing. There's places that are literally just going to have bricks that will stop you from being able to move. There's the, also the interesting aspect of you have to explore enough to the point where all of the locks are there, which I didn't explain fully, but once you've explored and you have all the locks that are placed, then you're going to remove all of the locks once every room is locked. So when all locks, once you've gone through every room that isn't locked, everything will be locked. And when that happens, you remove all locks and you'll keep going, which will expand, expand and expand the game. Uh, and of course, the objective is just to gather evidence against him, which is what a lot of people were trying to do at that point in time. All the characters have their own unique abilities. The player board's very nice because it has this little thing where you can take it off and you've used the ability. Shows the evidence markers that are placed here along with the extended and advanced versions of the game. And then how Holmes strikes you by basically stopping you from gathering evidence against him. Really cool, works really well. This character here uses the brick which he can place or take off. So he's kind of like a builder. He maybe helped build the castle in some way. You don't really, don't really, really say, but I'm sure that there's some lore attached to it. Each of the different rooms have specific ones uh, that do different things, like there's little mini games involved in them, but they don't take away from the game and they don't draw your attention out too long. They're very quick, like evidence gathering in this specific room means you also flip one of these over and something interesting will happen to you. There are also some interesting things that happen in the mo movement deck for Holmes. I discussed a couple of them where you have choices or he'll just go to a specific room and if he can't go, he'll just stay where he's at. But there's other cards like Rampage where you'll be able to draw, it'll say draw three cards and have him do those three movements. And 
could fall in junction with something like Lights Out, where you're going to shuffle the entire movement deck back in. When that happens, if this, if this specific ever, ever happened, you're going to shuffle the deck and you're going to stop the Rampage right there and then. It would be nice if it actually said, this, said it on this card or on this card, uh, because it does say in the rules, but just a little rules thing. Uh, then, of course, the different events that can happen in the game, the little event cards you'll use, like Liquid, Cur Liquid Courage, which will allow you to gain the basic selection, the basic bonus, uh, twice when you play this card. There's stuff like the Outwit card, which will basically allow you to remove a cube from your board after Holmes has visited you, basically taking away evidence from you, because as it keeps visiting you, it gets more and more difficult to keep the evidence on your board, so playing a card like Outwit will sustain you a little longer in the game. And then, of course, Snitch. Now, only, my only qualm mainly with this game is the ambiguousness of it, because the game is very simple to understand. Take an action, get the bonus, and everyone else takes the same action. And then passes on to the next player, and that person takes the action with the selection bonus, and then passes along to every player until everybody's taking the action, move homes, continue, gather all the evidence you need against him, get to the pharmacy. Now, what's confusing is you can't walk into Holmes' room, which I know, but it doesn't specifically say whether you can kind of, you can walk through him. So in the basement area, can you walk past him? And if not, you have to wait till he moves. We've been playing where you can't walk through Holmes, but it just was kind of ambiguous. Another thing to note too is, in order to win the game, you need to get the snitch card in the pharmacy. You have to be there where Holmes comes in as well. And then you play the snitch card with all the evidence that you've acquired and choose a player. And if they can't counter you, you win. But in the rules, it also says something like, if he walks into the pharmacy and you have the card and it's your turn, you can play it and then go to the room. So it just, it, it's just like little, little things that I, I, I want to be, I want more clear uh, in the game. But otherwise, this game feels a little bit like Betrayal in the House of the Hill, as far as placing the pieces to make this crazy mansion, castle style thing that has all these kind of crazy deranged rooms. And it has a little feel of this evidence gathering style game where you're trying to gather the specific types of cubes based on the Ferris wheel. You're moving that board to try and make sure the cubes you want are coming out, pushing Holmes on other players because you want to keep all the evidence for yourself, and Holmes to distract them by removing their cubes. And then, of course, you want to get to that pharmacy, have Holmes there, and push him onto another player so that you can escape just in time gives that like thematic element there's a lot of little bits and pieces to the game that add a lot of little interesting aspects like the secret book bookcases trapping specific areas that you know people are going to want the evidence from and making them go somewhere across the board that they don't want to go to and then of course just all the fact they have the second story the basement the middle area rooms and it all connects into this weird style castle labyrinth of sorts where you're playing a game of deduction and mystery and intrigue and then this social aspect too of don't hit me hit him or he's got more evidence oh well no you 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 played a card on me and so there's all this kind of back and forth through the game all with a lurking presence of holmes moving around doing his doing his nasty deeds overall this game is a lot of fun with a little bit of clarification i can see myself playing this a lot it reminds me of betrayal has a different fe features different aspects of play of course it's just a singular game that plays a different uh style of castle as well as utilizing different characters over and over again but it works really well it's definitely a fun game that i would suggest maybe for halloween or for those of you intrigued by the story of hh H. holmes overall i really enjoyed this game i'm very excited to see what the kickstarter looks like i will be following this one very closely and if you're interested as well you can take a look down below in the description it's on kickstarter you can pick the game up yourself back it or put that dollar in and see what you think as it goes along. Based on this prototype alone, I'm very fascinated to see what it comes up with next. H.H. Holmes, Murder Castle, Crimes in History by BGC. Go ahead and check it out down below. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, H.H. Holmes, Murder Castle, take a look down below in the description. It's a fun little game with some craziness attached to it. Also check out website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away the game just for fun or Elementos, one of those two are up on the site, as well as, of course, like, subscribing, and commenting. We do really greatly appreciate it. Every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST, we're doing a live stream where we play games just like this one on Facebook Live. Have a lot of fun. Have a built-in community where you should join and become a part of it with us. It is a ton of fun. And, of course, our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and before you play, all these great people over here. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as you can tell, my voice is, is dying already from being getting over sick. So <sighs> regardless, though, I want to make this video because this game is some craziness. All right, I'm, I'm done. All right. I look forward to not ever visiting you or myself in the H.H. H. Holmes murder castle. Not this time or next time.